An incredible experience that I absolutely loved, guys, was the infamous games. These games were really, really special in my personal opinion, and I really loved the first two. The third one, I didn't like quite as much, but I will say that I feel that this is a franchise that should continue in the future, and it may take us as the community to echo this thing into existence. So I want to go ahead and talk about everything that we know so far about Infamous 4. Could this happen? Will it happen? Let's talk about it, guys. So in an article coming to us from Ash Bates of Cultured Ventures, playing as a superpowered being is like the ultimate wish fulfillment in gaming. So it's no surprise that Sucker Punch's infamous series became as popular as it did. Being able to explore a massive open world and make your own decisions about whether or not you let absolute power corrupt absolutely infamous was certainly a special kind of game. However, after three main installments and two standalone campaigns, the series appears to have fallen off the face of the earth. The first infamous game launched in 2009 on PS3 and was seen as a huge departure for developer Sucker Punch, who had previously made a name for themselves developing the Sly Cooper trilogy. After the development of Sly 3 had wrapped, Sucker Punch were looking for their next big project, as Infamous' director Nate Fox explained in a 2009 interview with Joystick. We knew towards the end of Sly 3 that we wanted to do something else. Working on a cartoon thief game for six years, we got a little tired of sneaking around and wanted variation change. So, being comic book fans, it made a lot of sense to, to say, let's make a superhero game where we get to blow things up. Instead of cautiously looking through a bunch of guards' his patrol paths, which Sly Games had a fair amount of, we wanted to just be brazen and loud. And so that's where Infamous comes from. And look, I, I gotta tell you, Infamous was like just an incredible, I'm so glad that Sucker Punch moved away from the Sly Games and, and created Infamous because I think this is what really got them on the map. Despite earning uh, some comparisons to Prototype, which launched around the same time, Infamous proved to be incredibly successful for both Sucker Punch and PlayStation. The game earned an 85 on Metacritic, with reviewers praising the open world gameplay and general power fantasy of playing as a superhero or villain if you preferred the evil route. By June 2010, about a year after the game first launched, it was revealed that Infamous had sold almost 2 million copies, at which point a sequel was already on the way. Development of Infamous 2 kicked off pretty much immediately after the first game uh, finished, with Sucker Punch aiming to improve on the first game's core formula in any way they could. According to Ken uh, Schramm, the communications director, during an interview with NZ Gamer, everything was on the table. The biggest theme of the second game was uh, escalation, with Sucker Punch wanting the player to feel more powerful than ever. New powers, bigger enemies, and a grander scale helped to achieve that feeling, along with the fact you could import your previous game save and use all your old powers from the get-go. And the comparisons that, you know, uh, Infamous got to Prototype, they are definitely warranted. Uh, you know, that's another game that I would love to see a continuation of is Prototype. And that's, you know, we've created a lot of Prototype content on the YouTube channel. You guys can check out all that stuff if you're interested. But um, this one, that being Infamous and Prototype, are two games that came out around the same time. And we haven't had games like that since, which is really, really interesting to me. I'd love to see these both come back in some way, shape, or form. There's immense pressure on developers to add multiplayer, and whether it belongs or not, people are tacking multiplayer modes onto their games. We never felt like this IP would be great for that, but we wanted to give customers a way to continue to enjoy the property, and co-op was discussed. But while co-op may have given you a new way to play, it didn't give you that feeling of, I want to keep playing, because ultimately, the game still ends. I disagree with that, because I think that when you have co-op modes, it brings you back to the experience over and over again with your friends, whether it's you playing the campaign, whether you're just going up against waves and waves of enemies like zombies or horde mode in Gears of War, um, there's always something to do, whether it's with your friends or by yourself. Infamous 2 would almost reach equal level of critical success to the first game, earning an 83 on Metacritic. Most critics appreciated the bombastic improvements to the overall gameplay, even if uh, 
it proved to be more of the same from the original game. Exact sales figures are hard to find, but it was the third highest selling game of June 2011 behind L.A. Noir and Duke Nukem Forever, despite being ex exclusive, and it was Sony's highest seller for that month. So, you know, obviously, guys, this series sold a lot of copies. There's no doubt about it. And we know that Sucker Punch right now is, of course, they worked on Ghost of Tsushima, which is unbelievable. They're working on a, a Ghost of Tsushima 2. Um, so could they come back to this? I think they definitely could, but they're all hands on deck right now with Ghost of Tsushima and for good reason. Now, what happened to Infamous ultimately? Well, Sucker Punch were developing a brand new game in the series when the PS4 was still being designed, meaning that the eventual product, Infamous Second Son, was developed from the ground up with the new console in mind. Sucker Punch were even considering a next-gen version of Infamous from as early as 2010, some three years before the PS4 would even launch. So Second Son was a big deal for the company. Infamous Second Son was a departure from the original games in the series following a new protagonist in the form of Delson Row, who has the power to absorb the powers of other superpower beings known as conduits. Basically, Delson had the same powers as Peter and Heroes, but you could actually play as him. Now, once again, guys, the demise of Infamous um, reminds me a lot of the demise of Prototype, and it's very interesting to me that both these games were very similar, but when you had Alex Mercer in uh, in Prototype, the first game, they moved away from Alex Mercer so quickly in Prototype 2. And, you know, the reason for it is puzzling to me why they decided to do this. Well, Infamous did something similar. Now, they had two games at least with our main hero, and then they moved over to uh, a secondary hero in Second Son. But any time that you change from character to character, or at least the character that you're playing as, you're taking a huge risk. Um, you really have to build out the franchise before you do things like that. I think of games like Gears of War. You know, you had all these games, and then Gears of War 4 is where they changed, and the, the change they made was Marcus Phoenix is the main character from Gears 1 to 3, and then Gears 4 starts, and it's his son that takes over. Now, Marcus is still in the game, but... You know, it's more, he's kind of the mentor and you are, you know, JD, the son of Marcus, um, you know, kind of uh, manning the ship, so to speak. And so, you know, when you do it that way, where it's kind of, it's kind of an evolution of the franchise over time, it makes sense, but you really can't do that with one game. You can't do it with necessarily two. It usually takes a trilogy and then you can make changes after that. And they just did not do that. So Second Son was announced in February, 2013 as part of the PS4 reveal marketed as a core selling point for the new console. It took a year for the game to launch on PS4, arriving on March 21st, 2014. Second Son was set in and across Seattle with the team deciding to use the city so they could utilize the fact that most of the studio lives in the city and would draw heavily from the Native American experience, which is a core part of Seattle's identity. Infamous Second Son launched to an average of 80 on Metacritic, which is certainly a respectable score. Critics fell in love with the core gameplay known that it was an improvement over the first two games in the series, but some issues with the story and morality system left a sour taste. It was a great game, but it was a far cry from a world beater. Then again, it was better than the Xbox One's wave of exclusives at the time. So Sucker Punch also spun off one of the characters from Second Son, Fetch, um, into their own standalone DLC in the form of First Light. The game began development just after Second Son, with Sucker Punch deciding to focus on the character after the positive player reception she received. Unfortunately, First Light received the worst scores of the series, averaging a 73 on Metacritic. Critics enjoyed the character, but the more of the same approach to this DLC wasn't everyone's cup of tea. It also didn't help that First Light was incredibly brief. For me, guys, Second Son was the weakest of the three games, and in my mind, it wasn't really even close. I mean, sure, they did improve a couple of things, but I just loved our storylines that we had in the first two games, and I just felt that it was... A title that took a step in the wrong direction. So what's the future here, guys? Well, there's been no follow-up or even word of a new infamous game since 2014, and it's not immediately clear why. The PS4 exclusive reviewed decently well, and the sales have been fantastic, especially with Second Son. It feels like the series was killed off at the peak of its popularity, with Sucker Punch moving on to new things with Ghost of Tsushima. With the recent sales of Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut and the inevitable sequel, it's clear that Sucker Punch are preoccupied right now. There's the 
possibility, though, that Infamous Second Son could see new light in the form of a PC port in the future. Sony have been uh, porting more games to the PC over the past couple of years, such as Days Gone and Horizon Zero Dawn. And while Second Son might be an older property in comparison, it's held high um, in high enough regard to be considered part of the PlayStation Plus collection on PS5, which is a collection of stellar PS4 games that PS Plus players can enjoy. Perhaps the success of that, if it happens, could warrant a new game. So as for whether or not we'll see a new game, it's unclear whether or not Sucker Punch would be the ones to bring the series back. It's a bit of a kaput answer, but it's been 12 years since the release of the original game, so perhaps it's time for a remake of some kind. Blueprint have proved their capabilities when it comes to reviving classic PlayStation games like Shadow of the Colossus or Demon Souls. A PS5 version of Infamous from those acclaimed developers would be a real winner. Infamous is one of the most beloved PlayStation franchises, and with Sony featuring plenty of serious single-player exclusive like The Last of Us, Horizon, Ghost of Tsushima, there's room in their portfolio for a bombastic super-powered extravaganza, and Infamous would fit that bill. Whether or not we'll actually see it is another story. So, here's what I'll say, guys. I think we as the community have to come together if we want another infamous game made. You know, voicing our opinion to Sucker Punch that we want another infamous title. Um, you know, I feel that our voice does matter and it, and it can work. You know, I look at games like Dead Space that were in a limbo state or a state of no return. No one thought another Dead Space was going to come out after the original trilogy because of how bad the third game did in terms of, um, you know, critical reception and things of that nature. But we got a Dead Space remake. And so what I would love to see is an infamous remake. Make a infamous remake. Um, you know, whoever does it, whether it's Sucker Punch or some other company, does the remake and then see what the popularity is. You know, how popular is the remake? Is there still an audience here for this title? And then if there is, then you can go full blown into an infamous four. I really don't see many ways around outside of that unless they do some kind of collection or something of that nature, like a full remaster of all three games. It's going to be interesting, guys, to say the least, to see what happens here. But I believe that Infamous 4 would be incredible. And of course, with the modern technology, modern gaming, it would be something really special. But let me know, guys, do you think Infamous 4 will ever see the light of day? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about this in the comment section down below. And for more Infamous 4 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV.